Before we start this, I want to ask if you really want to do this. Do you want to learn how to play Texas Chainsaw Massacre? I don't mean are you ready to handle the roughest, toughest horror game out there. I mean the moment you learn about this game, your enjoyment of it is going to drop rapidly. You're going to go from a light, ooh that scared me, to I'm gonna catch that sunny player if it kills me. Like you're going to bring smallpox to an uncontacted tribe. I had fun my first few matches of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I slowly felt it get less fun with every further second I played it, and I'm offering you a chance. Go play it. Play it while everyone's dumb, while it's scary and divergent and it can surprise you. I promise you, after a couple of weeks, this game will not be playable anymore. Not in its intended capacity, anyway. You are gazing at a shooting star across the sky, and it's up to you whether it's a wishing star or the Haley Bop Comet. I shouldn't oversell it. The game is just kinda okay. But what I am telling you is that any value that can be derived from it is fleeting. Once people are running with a strategy and purpose that clashes with its tones and themes, it's not a horror game anymore. It's dead by daylight with a couple of seats swapped around. Also, so I offer you this. Go play it. Go play some rounds when you don't understand. You will die. It will be unfair and confusing, but it will also be scary. You will see disgusting areas that steal your attention, rush past a killer and dodge their attack at the last second because they don't understand the frame data. You will hear your friend get murdered as you just barely escape, running into the screaming grasp of the exit gate. And that's what you can experience if you just boot it up on Games Pass and not listen to this. Did that not work? You need headphones to play this properly or you will piss off your entire team. Okay, now you've been warned. Hey, before we get going, I'd just like to quickly thank the people on Patreon, because without them, I wouldn't be able to upload this at all. YouTube has decided that I am apparently, well, a Twitch compilation channel, and demonetized me. I'm optimistic that they'll work it out, but at the moment, the only reason I'm able to post this in the first place is because of people like them. Anyway, uh, back, with the, back to the video. Thank you. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a 3 vs 4 horror game based on the 1974 movie. A story where a couple of college kids end up in the clutches of a bunch of crazed cannibal hillbillies who would, in another life, accidentally run into Leon. The survivors all spawn in a basement and gather items to slowly progress through the property to an exit. The Sawyer family all spawn on separate points on the property, trying to find and kill the victims while prepping traps and feeding their grandpa. If a single victim escapes the match, it is a loss for the Sawyers. My experience with the movies goes this far. I saw the first one to make my Dead by Daylight Leatherface video. I also watched the 2013 remake, but halfway through the showing, some dudes got into a fist fight, so they escorted me and my friends out of the theater, then gave us a free ticket to see it again later, which I never redeemed because it was fucking awful. Though hey, the first movie is as old as my favorite local pizzeria, so that's something. We're going to start with a victim guide, then do a family guide. The victims spawn in the basement and have to make it out through one of four exit points. The location of these depend on the map you're playing, but they'll usually follow a similar theme. Some require you to break a generator, another needs a pressure valve to turn, and another requires a fuse. However, before any of these options are available to you, you need to get out of this basement. At this point, only one family member will be down there trying to kill you, which in a couple of hours, you will find is about as threatening as a little dog who wants the ball in your hands. Your first goal will be to find some items. These can range from health kits to patch yourself up, lock picks for progress, and bone shards to disable traps or attack the family. Each victim has their own special ability and traits. For example, Anna can withstand more damage, Sunny can detect threats, and Leland can attack. Though they also have a downside. Connie can burst down certain objectives, but has less stamina to escape. However, if you don't want to, well, sit around and be annoying, your priority should be to search one of these toolboxes for a lockpick. The basement is sealed by two doors, both of which have a padlock on them. In order to search the box, you have to perform a mini game where you slowly search, filling up a meter. If if the meter is full, you start making a loud sound that gives you away. So you make a bit of progress, wait. Do a bit of progress, wait, wait, wait. Or you can do the process in under a second at the cost of giving away your location. Like searching this properly takes maybe 10 times the amount of time. It might be smarter, but it's also fucking annoying. I mean, staying in one spot while vulnerable is scary, but I'm soon going to realize the solution is to just do it faster. It's to get caught while you can still do something about it. At some point, I stopped bothering. If I'm gonna get caught, I'm gonna get caught. Here, go get it. This minigame is a bit different when you're lockpicking, because then it'll shatter if you do it too much. I mean, hey, speaking about doing stuff quickly, if you're wondering how I got this video done in such a short amount of time... Persona! 
<laughs> this is stupid. The other thing you need to manage is your health. You are always injured in this game. Med kits can peel back the damage and lessen it, but it will never go away. Your character is always bleeding, always whining. No, not yet. The game is very stealth oriented. It's good to just not start a chase if you don't have to. Leatherface makes a loud chainsaw revving sound when he's looking to attack. If you get found, you will be chased, to which you will find several options. You can try to vault these surfaces, squeeze through a crack in the wall, and shimmy under a crawl space. However, some of these options lead to infinites, specifically these gaps in the walls. Most killers cannot pass these, but if you find one of these, you can just hold the team hostage while your friends escape. If you're out of ideas on how to catch someone when this is happening, luckily there's a family guide. When the match starts, you'll spawn in one of three locations, each one a different distance from the victims. Depending on where you are, you will need to prioritize different things. The survivors start with stealth on their side, so for the family, this opening section is about laying traps that will impact the match later. For example, Leatherface needs to destroy certain escape routes, the cook will place locks to annoy the fuck out of some guy later, Hitchhiker sets bear traps, and on his way out, spends every five seconds locking and unlocking the cook's padlocks. If you ever need to know what your team is up to, there's a focus ability that will highlight them and other things like blood bags. Usually the person in the second and third spawn will prioritize feeding grandpa the fourth family member. This old fella spawns in every match and will wake up after a bit of sound goes off. Grandpa will use magic. Grandpa will use magic. He will moan as loud as he can, and if a victim moves in that time, they'll be revealed to the family. In a game where the primary way of playing is stealth, that's pretty big. Most of the time I lose his family, it's because someone escaped the basement and got so far ahead in such a short amount of time that I didn't even bother to check if they'd been there yet. It's important that the two family members who spawn outside use their time wisely. The family members that aren't Leatherface tend to have some kind of setup power. Bubba will spawn in every game, and he will always be in the basement. Because without him, it's just the Texas Massacre. And Lord knows those are in bad taste. Leatherface is the most unique family member so far. He needs to rev up a saw for massive damage, but it can also be made to stall if you fumble it, requiring a reset action that will ruin your chases. The other reason he spawns in every game is that he's the only character capable of breaking the many options the opposition has to escape. Because the Sawyers also decided to fill their property with things to bang their shins on and block the fucking bathroom. Then you have your secondary objective. Grandpa Sawyer. Grandpa gets stronger when the family gives him blood, a resource rewarded to them for certain actions. I would be a bit worried about all those hip and nouveau diseases in there, but that's what being old is for. You get blood by searching these random bags around the map, or by hitting victims. Then you must return to his spot and give him the forbidden ketchup. Grandpa has five levels. With each one, his detection abilities get stronger. And once fully maxed out, he casts his Ultra Mega Death Moan, where the spirits he communes with will suddenly reveal you no matter what. This takes a while to get, and functions as a gentle hand on the super immersed victim that says, you lost. Can we get on with it? If a victim is feeling extra bold, they can attack Grandpa with a bone shard, dropping his level by one, but getting fully revealed after doing it, opening up the family's full attention. Yet here's the sticking point, never let your victims get to you. Don't let them make you mad, because they have the tools to make your head spin if you let them. One thing you will need to know is that any victim with a couple of hours in the game will come to learn how powerful their chase options are. Each member of the family has a different way of interacting with these. For example, small cracks in the wall can be shimmied through by the hitchhiker, but Leatherface can stick his chainsaw through it, and the cook can complain about it. There's a few options for mind games, but not really. The best thing you can truly do is scream at your team and get a second person over there like someone left the fridge open. With two people, you can finally corner someone and introduce them to your unfriendly neighborhood. Though that's two of your three people trying to kill one person. Then you finally get them and, well, I wouldn't say whacking them feels satisfying. Leatherface can feel weighty because it better feel weighty, but the hitchhiker and cook more so swing imaginary things in the air and people scream. The characters also have this sort of slippery feeling to them. But that's not all. The survivors can gang up on you, too. There's a lot of wonky moving mechanics that allow for backstabs. So I hope you enjoy playing spin the bottle with your own spine, because if you mess up, they're going to stun you, then call over their friends to do it over and over. If you're not trying to be in someone's toxic victim gets shut down video, the best option you have is to look for one of the wells that send you back down to the basement.
You take damage and lose some time, but it's better than failing to resume stealth and slowly building up more attention, like a really greasy and smelly Katamari Damacy. To talk about aesthetics, they've captured the spirit of this family quite well. Each one of them has a slick layer of grease on them without looking too freakish and being unrecognizable. That's excluding Leatherface, but there's a reason he spawns in the basement. The cook, hitchhiker, sissy, and Johnny toe the line between gross-out horror and your average fear of your neighbor. These are all the kind of people that I could see skeeving me out at a gas station, but not weird enough to call the police on. Hell, in another world, I'd give them some LSD and a picture of a politician. The plan seems to be creating original characters for the game rather than reaching for the glup shittos. A decent plan, actually, and for what it's worth, these designs do fit very well into the TCMCM. Not the best plan, but probably the second best. Johnny and Sissy capture that sweaty, rural, psychopath vibe that you'd get from the other three. So I have faith that they're going to be true to the franchise, at least as true as this buffalo chicken slice. Now to talk about, well, the elephant in the room. I don't think this game has a broad future. That doesn't mean I think it's bad or that you will not enjoy it in some way. I will mostly be addressing the Dead by Daylight fans in the room, because I feel like you guys have a very different set of expectations compared to someone discovering this for the first time. The DVD fanbase treated VHS like it was some sort of Tinder fling to make their ex jealous, not a person to actually invest in, more like someone you show off, talking about how much happier you are over here. But at the end of the day, you dumped them too without a second thought, because really, you just wanted your original ex to think you were elusive and fix their shit to keep you. Then you went back to their honeyed promises and the exact same thing happened. I do not expect this game to be still running strong in a year, but I also don't think the people who made it want or expect that. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is not meant to be some god-shattering star that we all play until the end of time. It's okay if the game just sorta gives us its intended experience, lasts a little bit, and we look at it fondly later. You could also let it tunnel into your heart like an untreated infection and spend the rest of your time off from work trying to recapture how it made you feel the first time. The reason I say you should play it now is because I can already see people looking to take the fun away from it. The game just came out and I saw someone crafting a busted Connie build. And no shade to this specific person, someone was gonna do it. As long as the game exists, there will be people who want to optimize it. That's just the nature of online games. Though it does mean they'll be less fun when everyone starts thinking like this. Imagine what it'll be like when you have a true plan and have seen it all play out before. You know the escape routes and all of your options against the family. Which is why I gave you that fucking warning at the start of the video. Because I did enjoy my first few hours with it, especially in the technical test. I felt a palpable anxiety as I watched Leatherface stumble through the room I was in and just barely hide from him. Now I've played it a bunch and I know what he's capable of. Now I feel the same way I do when I pick Teemo in League of Legends. I don't feel anything. Huh? League of Legends? Me? Teemo? Well, I'm gonna ask if you really wanna do this. Hey, thanks for watching. I made this one in a very short amount of time, so I'm kind of a uh, kind of gassed out and losing my mind a bit. But before I crash and burn, I'd like to thank the people on Patreon who made videos like this possible. I would especially like to thank MarioFan997, Coldeneye1, My Reed. Ethan A. Auker, and Jonah Simpson. Once again, thank you for watching, have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video.